Now to the coronavirus pandemic. Americans could soon be lining up for booster shots. The head of the CDC says federal health officials are aiming to authorize a third dose. Hello, today I present to you an extremely attractive application for music lovers. It's completely free. You can listen to music online or download unlimited music to use whenever you don't have internet. The powerful search function helps you find anything you want. Trust me. It's hard not to find what you're looking for because the search function is really powerful. Application download link is attached in the description of the video. I'm pretty sure you'll like it. Thanks. Post by late September. She warns that some people are beginning to see vaccine effectiveness decrease against infection with the result of more breakthrough cases. Meanwhile, the Delta variant is sweeping across the southern U.S. Several states are facing an alarming shortage of hospital beds amid the summer surge. Janet Chamlian reports from Atlanta. Tonight in hospitals across the South, it's not unlike the pandemic's darkest days, a battlefield. To the central. Albany, Georgia had the worst per capita death rate in the nation early last year. Its hospitals are overrun again. Our expiratory minute ventilation is terrible. Dr. Enrique Lopez is working through his second surge. Did you ever think last year when you were the center of the virus for a period of time that you would ever be back at this place? Absolutely not. Make no mistake, we are right back where we were and we're in the fight of our lives again. Intensive care units are now at 90% capacity across Georgia. And where there are beds, often not enough doctors and nurses. Arkansas is close to capacity. And in Alabama, almost no ICU beds at all. Dozens of critical COVID patients are waiting in emergency rooms. Some 20,000 Mississippi students just last week were quarantining for COVID exposure. She was a great kid. Really Justin Waddell lost his 13-year-old daughter, Michaela. From Wednesday, she was alive. She, she felt a little sore throat. By Saturday, she was gone. Florida's two largest school districts are now making masks mandatory. Miami-Dade joining Broward in opposing the governor's order. A new Oxford University study finds fully vaccinated people with breakthrough infections carry a similar amount of the virus as the unvaccinated who get the Delta variant COVID. You've been through the ringer. With Delta sweeping the region, Dr. Lopez says the suffering is unimaginable. They're suffocating you, then they keep begging you for air. To go from room to room and to see that, you can't help but feel helpless, powerless. Here at the CDC tonight, they are reporting the highest rate of COVID hospitalizations for people under the age of 50 since the pandemic started. But there is a bright spot. Today, more than a million vaccinations nationwide. That is the most in seven weeks. Lana? Very mixed results there. All right, Janet, thank you. Dr. Adam Brown joins me now. He's an emergency physician and the COVID-19 National Task Force Chair at Envision Healthcare. Dr. Brown, as we just saw, the Delta variant is devastating the southern U.S. Can we turn this pandemic around before the fall when more people are heading indoors or will be back in school? Uh, that's a great question, but sadly, I'm afraid that we're going to continue to see this rise of COVID cases, especially as people move from outdoors into indoors and as we're seeing this unmitigated spread of the Delta variant, especially in unvaccinated areas, there are a lot of concerns for us heading into the fall and into the winter. Well, a new study out of Oxford University found that fully vaccinated people with breakthrough infections from the Delta variant actually carry similar amounts of the virus as unvaccinated people. How concerned are you by this information? Well, I think there's actually a silver lining in this study. If you take a look at the study, it was a very large one with about 700,000 people where they compared people from uh, the beginning part of the year where the Alpha variant was the dominant strain in the UK to the Delta variant, which was the dominant strain in the spring and the summer. And what this showed was that if you're vaccinated, your chance of getting infected are much, much lower and your chances of severe illness is much, much lower. However, there was something that we did see in the study as well, and that is vaccinated individuals do have a similar amount of viral particles in their body or an infectious material as those who are unvaccinated. Now, what that means exactly, we're not sure about how long someone is infected or infectious if they have the vaccine or not. 
that this is one of the reasons why it's so important for us to continue to have those public health mitigation strategies around masking, social distancing, whether you're unvaccinated or not. Important point that uh, just because the viral load is high in those breakthrough cases, it doesn't mean that people shouldn't get vaccinated or continue to wear their masks. All right. The head of the CDC says that federal health officials are aiming to authorize booster shots by late September. But as you know, just a few weeks ago, officials said the booster shots weren't needed. So what's changed? Well, I think what's changed is we've seen some studies that have come out of Israel that have shown that the antibodies, the infection fibers within the body start to wane over a certain period of time. We've also seen from those studies that some of those individuals who have had breakthrough infections, those infections when someone's been vaccinated and they still get infected, have been happening more often with those who have seen antibodies decrease. And so I do think that the reason for that shift is we are seeing what is coming, and that is there's more individuals that are going to get infected who have been vaccinated. And while that number is significantly lower than those individuals who have been unvaccinated, I think this is a preventive measure to ensure that we're not seeing an even greater spread of the Delta variant throughout the United States. I'm hoping you can help explain another thing uh, for us. Dr. Fauci says it's important to, quote, give the immune system a chance to mature before administering a COVID booster shot. Tell us what he means by that. And how does that eight-month timetable uh, that the administration recommended fit into this? Well, I think, first, boosters are not something that are completely new. For many of us who receive our tetanus shots, when we get cut again, when we go back to the doctor, they often will ask, when's the last time you got your tetanus shot so that you're sure to get a booster? So depending on the type of vaccine, depending on the person, you may have different levels of immunity at different times. So this is not a surprise that we would need to get a booster shot. What's new is that this virus is new. And so what we are seeing is how do antibodies or the immune fighters within the body react to the vaccine. And so what we saw after about six months of receiving two shots of the vaccine, or fully vaccinated, there's a really good response with antibodies. But now as we head into seven months later, eight months later, we're seeing some of those antibodies wane. And as I mentioned before, that may open us up to more breakthrough infections. So that's one of the reasons why there's been a shift in the policy from moving towards boosters, especially for those who are immunocompromised or receive the vaccines early in the part of the year. All right, Dr. Adam Brown, thank you for joining us and thank you for all that you do.